The mic's on. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I, okay. Well, this is an honor, too, for me to be up here talking to you guys tonight. Uh, so I, I appreciate the opportunity to do this. And um, so, but we're, we're going to do a... We're going to do a Wayne thing tonight, I guess. You know, I'm going to share some stuff with you. I've got some giveaways, though. I mean, you guys are coming at a good night because i got giveaways up here. So uh, you're going to get some giveaways. And, <clears throat> and uh, for those of you who didn't show up and are watching on Facebook, i got no giveaway for you, you know, but, uh, but these guys are going to get it. But, but they're also going to get some other stuff, too. <laughs> the title of the message tonight is, what did I say it was? Huh? Nope. You're getting my guts. You know, uh, you know and, and there's, a, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a story behind that. You know, whenever Doug goes up to preach and I see him in the back here, uh, I always, uh, many times, most of the time, tell him, you know, Doug, give him your guts. And you know what that means? That means let it all, get, get it all out there. Get it all out there. So tonight, <clears throat> I'm going to give you my guts. And... Uh, <clears throat> It may be a little sharp at times for some of you, you know, and it may be a, a welcoming thing for some, you know, sharp for some, welcoming for others. And, uh, and if, it's, if it's a sharp thing uh, and, and, and uh, we find out that maybe that's something that I should have left out or whatever, well, then you can pray for me about that. But if it's something else, then maybe that's something that you need to deal with, with the Lord, you know, on those types of things. In any event... You're getting my guts tonight, so. But first, we're going to sing. And the first song that I have on the list here, take out your hymnal. How do you do this? There you go. Is uh, number one. Number one, hymn number one. You don't have to stand or nothing. You can just sit there, and we'll just uh, we'll sing this. <clears throat> You ready? Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfolding, flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Verse 2. All thy works with joy surround the earth in heaven, reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountains, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in Thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the happy chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward, in the triumph song of life. <clears throat> That's a good one, isn't it? Kind of pump you up a little bit. Um, here's another one that'll kind of get you pumped. Number 59. 
I sing the mighty power of God. <clears throat> you all ready? Here we go. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. Verse 2, I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed where'er I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread or gaze upon the sky. Last verse, ready? There's not a plant nor flower below, but makes thy glories known. The clouds arise and tempests blow by order from your throne. While all that borrows life from thee is ever in thy care. And everywhere that man can be, thou, God, art present there. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think I'm going to get started. What do you think? Because I really don't know how much time I'm going to take. <laughs> but um, I'm going to start first by passing out. Everybody take a piece of paper. And everybody get a pencil. You get to keep the pencil. Just pass them around. And I just got to tell you, uh, you know, if you come to my Sunday school, uh, we have quizzes. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, here's the deal. Sometimes I spend three or four hours studying. Am I good? I spend three or four hours studying and getting ready for Sunday school or messages or this and that. And the thing is, I figure if I'm doing three or four hours, then, you know, the folks in the class, they, they ought to be able to put a little effort into it as well. So usually we talk about, <clears throat> you know, we talk about a subject or topic or we're doing verse by verse. And then the, uh, I let them know that next week we're going to have a quiz. And uh, next week we have a quiz. And I ask them questions. And you know what? Some of the guys do really well. Some of the times, and sometimes they, they have their moments, but they're hanging in there. And here's the thing with me. You know, I'm doing the high school class, and these guys are the future leaders. You know, we're, I'm going to be gone one day. I mean, I, I don't know how much time the Lord has left with me, and, and these guys are coming up, and they're going to need the stuff. They're going to need the guts, you know. I got to give them the guts because we don't, I don't know how much time I got. So, so that's the deal. So tonight... You're going to get a quiz, and uh, once everybody has a pencil and a piece of paper, I'll give you your first question. And, and you know what? Here's the thing. <coughs> this isn't uh, stump the chump with the questions. It's, it's so that you have a, just an understanding of where you might be, where I might be. I mean, I, I couldn't answer all my questions I wrote down, you know. I had to look some of them up. But in any case, here's question number one. How many years did David rule as king? That's question number one. How many years did David rule as king? I can tell you, you can find this in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. But I don't want you to look there. I'm just telling you that's where it's at. Question number two. Where do you find in the Bible... Uh, uh, where in the Bible do we find the words, I will never leave you nor forsake you? Where do you find that in the Bible? I will never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> Question number three. Am I going too fast? Question number three. Write down the Ten Commandments. 
As many as you know, write them down. Question number four. You, you could go back. You could go back to do the Ten Commandments. Leave, leave yourself some space. But we're going to press on. Question number four. How many Psalms are in the Bible? How many? What number? Psalms. What number? How many, how many Psalms are in the Bible? What number? How many Psalms are written in your Bible? How many? What number? Okay, I'm going to press. We'll go through these. In what book of the Bible do we find the words, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering? What book is that found in? God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. What book do you find that in? And the last question, in what year was the War of 1812 fought? Those are your questions. Now we'll go over them. How many years did David rule? Forty. Where do you find in the Bible, uh, I will never leave you nor forsake you? Hebrews 13.5. Deuteronomy 31.8, Deuteronomy 31.6, Joshua 1.5, 1 Chronicles 28.20. All those places, that's where that, that verbiage is used. No. <laughs> Write down the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember to keep the Sabbath holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. <clears throat> How many Psalms are there? 150. Where do you find in the Bible the words, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering? Genesis 22, verse 8. Now, um, you can keep these. You keep the pencils. That's, that's one of the giveaways for tonight. We probably had some tr uh, prob uh, trouble with some of these questions. And, and what I wrote down here is there's room for improvement. You know, on my report cards growing up, my teachers always wrote in there, Room for improvement. <laughs> but number six, what year was the War of 1812 fought in? See me after class if you don't get that one. <laughs> you do whatever you think is right there, Pastor. All right, let's have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll get into the message. But uh, uh, again... It might be sharp at times, it might be welcoming, but, I, but I, I hope that it will encourage, it will challenge, it will help us to uh, uh, really think, you know, our, our areas for room of improvement. Let's pray. Father, we do want to thank you for this time. Lord, this is your blessed word. You've given it to us. And you know, sometimes we have a hard time finding things and we have a hard time navigating through your word. And tonight, I ask that you'd help us, Lord, to uh, uh, find the room for improvement where you could teach us and guide us and lead us and help us, Lord, to learn your word. Just like in Deuteronomy where it says that they were to teach their children and teach their families when they're sitting down, standing up, walking, you know, the, the, you know and the, the word was in front and behind. You know, we don't want to be biblically illiterate. We want to uh, find our way and, and get to know you better. And so we ask that you'd bless this time and teach us in Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, <clears throat> I put down here, first I must say that this message tonight is as much for you as, uh, as it is for me. Um, we all need to be encouraged. We all need to uh, uh, be challenged. And uh, turn to uh, uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1.6. 2 Timothy 1.6. Now, this isn't the uh, uh, scripture that I'm going to be talking about, but it's, it's, it's part of it. 2 Timothy 1.6. It says, stir up the gift of God which is in you. Stir it up, you know, stir it up. And tonight, I want to stir you up. We got to get stirred up with some things, you know. I, I think, you know, and I need to get stirred up. And, and Paul is speaking to Timothy, and he wants Timothy to get stirred up. That word means to, to rekindle, you know, rekindle. This, it means to intensify, and it's the gift of God that was given to him. So God has given us gifts, and, you know, sometimes... Uh, uh, we're, we're a little lazy with them. And we got to get, and, and Paul just is, he's telling Timothy, this guy who walked with him, Timothy, get stirred up. Now, you know, ice cream, you, you got to constantly stir ice cream to make ice cream. You know what happens when you don't constantly stir it? It becomes ice crystals. Large ice crystals collect in there, and they're unedible. So, just like ice cream, you know, you got to stir it up before you can have that ice cream. We as believers, we, we got to get stirred up. You know, um, God has given us all of it here. And, and Paul knew that, and Paul's telling Timothy that. Later on in 2 Peter, look over in 2 Peter for a minute. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And I wrote it down here, verses 12 and 13, it says, For this reason, I will not be negligent, this is Paul, I'm not going to be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, this body, to stir you up by reminding you. You know, so here... Peter's talking about stirring people up, arousing people, arousing these people. You, you, you know these things, you know, these, these things have been taught to you, and you got to get stirred up. Um, that word uh, talks about uh, the, uh, the stir up has to do with to awaken fully, you know. It has to do with to be aroused. It means to be roused from sleep and collecting one facility, you know, the, your facilities, you know, when you wake up and you're just, you know, you're not, you got to have your coffee first or whatever, you know. Um, we need to get stirred up. We need to get, a, we need to, you know, uh, you know, I'm studying Nehemiah on Sunday nights, and that guy just made it happen. That guy was getting it done. All the stuff that was going against him, he was getting it done. And he wasn't doing it on his own. You know, the Lord was helping him. But he was, he was making it happen, and he wasn't deterred. And, and earlier we see... Uh, Paul talking to Timothy, and now Peter telling us to get stirred up. But that's not my text tonight. We need to get stirred up, but my text is 2 Timothy 2.15, so turn there. 2 Timothy 2.15. And I know that you all, you're all probably well acquainted with these, you know, this isn't a wanna verse, this is, we're, we're doing this verse all the time, and, but we're going to talk about this tonight, 2 Timothy 2.15. And the word says this, it says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, whenever I teach my Sunday school class, I say, okay, what's that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? And, and they, sometimes they look at me like they're thinking, and they don't have, I don't know, they don't have an answer, but sometimes they have kind of an answer. But what does that mean? Study to show yourself approved a work, uh, unto God, a workman that Needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's break it down. Let's talk about the first word, study. Study means to, to make, an, make an effort. Make an effort, he's saying. Make an effort to, to show yourself approved. It means to be diligent. It, it means to endeavor. It means to labor. You know, study is hard work. It's not easy. And not only that, when you're studying the word of God, You've got the enemy 
that is doing everything that he can to keep you out of that. So it, it's, it's, it's not an easy discipline to study. But here, um, Paul is tem- telling Timothy, you got to study, man. You got to study. And believers, we have got to study. We have got to learn the word of God. Let's not be biblically illiterate. You know, let's not expect the pastor to give us a message for 30 or 45 minutes on Sunday, and that's going to last the whole week. Let me ask you a question. Last year this time, pastor preached a message up on his pulpit. What did he say? What did he say? This day, this Sunday, last year, this Sunday, what did he preach? Do you remember? What did he preach six months ago up there? Do you remember? What did he preach last week up there? Do you remember? What did he preach today, just a few hours ago up there? Do you remember? Do you remember? You know what? I thought about this, and you know who would have, you know who would have been able to answer that question? Mrs. Hebert. Because Mrs. Hebert had her notebook, and she did her notes every Sunday. That woman was diligent. So studying takes diligence. It takes, it's an endeavor. It's, it's, it's a labor. And this word study, uh, the, the word has to use with do it speedily. You know, don't, don't waste your time. You know, get at it. Get at it. You know, Nehemiah, that's what he did. He got at it, man. Hananiah and Hanai went and told him what was going on in Jerusalem, and he got at it. He didn't wait. He got at it. Anyway, study. So as... Uh, <clears throat> You know, the, this, this, this speed thing, is, it's so as a means of not wasting precious time with things that cannot compare to the word of, of truth. You know, we waste precious time on so many other things that really don't compare to the word of truth. And, and again, I'm going to tell you, this is not an easy discipline. If it was easy, we'd all be pastors, all of us. But it's not an easy thing. You're going to have to labor. You're going to have to be diligent. You're going to have to make an effort. You know, the Jewish scribes, when, they, when, they, uh, uh, when, the, when the pages of the Bible, they, they wrote on skins or whatever, when they were wearing out, you know what they had to do? They had to copy it over again. And you know how diligent they were to copy it over again? The, every, every letter, every word was in the same place as it was on the old sheet. It was, a, it was an identical copy. And if there was one mistake, they destroyed it and started over. And every time they came, you know, they had to do ceremonial cleansings and stop at certain points. Everything had to be perfect, perfect, perfect. And so the Word of God, the the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible that we have, those guys, they painstakingly, I mean, imagine how much time that took. Every letter in the same spot. I can't do that. Could you do that? I'm not a scribe, but I can't do that. So study. Next word, next, next, next words, to show yourself. You know what that means, to show yourself? It means to participate. It means to be a partaker. Study to show yourself. Be a participant. Be a partaker in this endeavor. You know, um, I put down here, God didn't save us to sit in the bleachers and watch the game, so to speak. We haven't been saved to sit in the bleachers and watch the game. That's not why he saved us. He saved us so that we could participate with him in his plan for his creation, uh, and, and, and he has given us everything we need, every tool, everything we need to be successful, to participate with him. I, I put down here, listen to these verses. I know you all know them, but uh, let me just stir you up again with these words. In uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, I know you know these, but we're going to do it again, you know. You got to get stirred up, man. I mean, I, I, I don't mind you stirring me up either. But 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses uh, 2 through 4, it says this, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So knowing who God and Jesus is, grace to you, according as his divine power, not my power, it's not me, it's him, it's not the pastor, it's, it's him. It's his divine power. He's given to us. You know, and you know, Peter, you know who Peter's talking to? People of like precious faith, when you see this in verse one. Like precious faith, the faith. that's us guys, born again believers, like precious faith. He says, a divine power he's given to us, 
all things that pertain to life and godliness. You know, I know you know these verses. We, we hear them all the time in here. But we gotta kind of gotta kind of make them stick. And it says, uh, pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Where and he doesn't just give us his divine power to know the knowledge and virtue and glory of him. He's also given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of a divine nature. You can never get the divine nature on your own. I don't care if you get the lottery or all that stuff. You're not going to get the divine nature outside of Christ. But here he's given us, allowed us to be partakers of this divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So God has given us an escape. You know, we, and he's given us all these things. And, and I'm telling you, we got to get stirred up. We can't be biblically illiterate anymore. We can't rely on the pastor to give us 30 minutes or 45 minutes on Sunday and have that carry us through the whole week. You can't do that. You need to start endeavoring. You need to start laboring. You need to start digging into the Word of God. I told you sometimes it takes me three or four hours to get the Sunday school lesson ready or whatever, you know. And, you know but we, we need to start doing that. So, so here's the next verse here, the next words in our lesson tonight. Study to show yourself... And it says, the next one, approved unto God. You know what that means? That means acceptable. It means tried. It means be of, a, 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 of reputation. It means one who can be trusted, you know. Approved unto God. Not unto me. You don't have to approve yourself to me. Um, you know, you don't have to approve yourself to the pastor. You don't have to even approve yourself to Paul who wrote that. He said, you, you know, you've got to be approved unto God. You know, um, I put down here, you want what you're doing. Uh, uh, what, what did I write here? <laughs> I said, you, you, you want what you're doing in your diligent study in search of the word of God to meet his approval. That's what you want. You want whatever you're doing, your study, to meet his approval. Not my approval, not the pastor's approval. But when you're studying the word of God, you want to meet his approval. Because that's what it says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Not unto Paul, not unto pastor, not unto me or anybody else, but unto God. <clears throat> I said my approval uh, might mean well, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I read uh, uh, chapter one today, uh, you know, you know, you know, if I, if I study for my own approval, you know, like I say, well, I, I'm just going to read one, one chapter a day. And, you know, Wayne, you did pretty good today. You, went, you read one chapter. Or maybe I read 10 chapters. So, oh, you know what? Man, you did really good, Wayne. You read 10 chapters today, you know. Or it could be, uh, you know, I've done enough, you know. Or I went to church this week. Hey, that's got to be approved somewhere, right? I went to church. It, it, can I check a box here? You know, I've done enough. I've done what I could. God understands how busy I am. This is, you know, that's why I can't really study to show myself approved. Uh, you know, he understands I'm a busy guy. Or, you know what, I'll make it up next week to you, God. I'll make it up next week to you. You know, that's not, that's not what it's about. We need to really start digging in. Approved, um, it means acceptable unto God. He, uh, and, and you know what, he's the one who could be trusted with all this. Um, Let's turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. I got down here verses 3 and 4. Look what Paul said. You know, this is what we're studying in our Sunday school with, my, with the uh, youth, the young guys. And you know, uh, you know how Paul ended up in Thessalonica? He got thrown out of Philippi. What happened in Philippi? He got beat up, got whipped, got thrown in jail. You know, and so he gets to Thessalonica, and I imagine the people looked at him, and they probably saw the bruises. They probably saw the stuff on his back. They probably, you know, they knew what was going on. And so, uh, and you know what? God was the one that, that drew Paul to Thessalonica. Paul didn't decide, hey, you know, guys, you know we're leaving Philippi. Let's just hop over to Thessalonica. No, it was something else. It was God doing that. Look at what he says here in verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. 
This is how Paul says it. I am allowed by God to be entrusted with the word of God. You believers, we are allowed by God. God is allowing us to be entrusted with this, you know? I mean, <clears throat> you know, you got kids growing up and you got knives all over the place, you know, little kids. <laughs> you don't just let the kid go over there and play with the knives, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't let them do that. You're watching out for them. But, but here we got the precious word of God and, and God is entrusting that to us and allowing us to be a part of that. This is what Paul says. He says, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which tried our hearts. So, uh, and then a little later in, in, in 1 Timothy, he says it this way. 1 Timothy chapter number six. <clears throat> Verse 20 and 21, it says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to your trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace to you. Timothy, keep it. Keep this word of God in you. Keep at it, you know. Um, keep it. And then back to our text. You know, the text that we all memorize in Awana. And, you know, we... Let's look, at, let's look at some more words here that are involved with that. So we've got down, <clears throat> we've got down a, a study, show yourself, approved unto God. Uh, what's the next one? A workman. So what's a workman? What's a workman? He's a laborer. A workman is a toiler, and that means to engage in severe and continuous work. <laughs> so studying... Is, is you're engaging in, in, in severe and continuous work. It's not, you know, it's, it's not going to come easy. You're going to have to labor. That, that thing workman also has, has to do with being a teacher. It also has, has to do with being a laborer. It's, it's hard, continuous work. It means to labor arduously with difficulty, weariness, or pain. When was the last time you were studying your scriptures with uh, difficulty, Weariness or pain? I, I like to say that we're living in a marshmallow fluff world, you know, because everything's so fluffy. So that's the workman. Then the next thing, that needs not. So what does this mean? Needs not. It, it needs not this or that. It doesn't need this or that. You know, it, it has to do with a comparison. That needs not be ashamed. And that means to not... Uh, uh, to not be blameworthy, to feel shame or disgrace. Let it never be said of us, Lord, I never knew you. Let that never be said of us. You know, uh, there's been times I've talked to the Lord and I said, you know, Lord, uh, well, when I first came to know him, I said, I don't even know you. I don't know who you are. I know about you, but I really don't know you. And I want to get to know you, you know? And that's how I, my journey started. And you know, there's a scripture where Jesus talks in, in, in the Gospels, and that really is, 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 a, is a pivotal one for me, where he says to his disciples, learn of me. And you know, that, that, that's, that's, he's talking to me when he says that. Learn of me. Learn about Jesus. Learn about who he is. You know, someday we're going to be standing in front of him, and you know, uh, we're not going to have an excuse. You know, like Doug was talking about, we're not going to have any excuse. You know, I can't say, well... I, I didn't have time, I had to do this, I had to do that. You know, they ain't gonna be there. And you, know, you don't wanna be ashamed. You, know, uh, you wanna leave this world with an empty suitcase, give it all to the Lord. That's what you want. That's what's gonna be your blessing. So, need not be ashamed. And then he goes on to say, rightly, which means in a straight manner, it means correct, it means uh, plain, Rightly dividing, dividing means to, to make a straight cut. <laughs> and I have a little funny story that goes along with this. You know, in the military, I always had to get a haircut like every two weeks. And haircuts are uh, uh, high anxiety for me because you never know what you're going to look like when you get out of there. So, and, you know, so you're always kind of looking, eyeballing, who's cutting hair, you know, this and that, who am I going to get? And, 
And, and I, I get panicky, you know, and I really did. So one day uh, I go to the barber, and it's a woman, and she just says, I'm the best, best barber in the world. So I sit down, get my hair cut, I go home. And this has to do with rightly dividing, making a straight line. My wife looks at the back of my head, and she goes, what happened to you? I go, what are you talking about? She goes, your hair is cut uneven. You know, the block back here was like, whoop. And I thought, you know, they show you the mirror, but I just want to get out of there. Whenever they say you do the mirror, and I'm good, I'm good, I want to go. And so here this woman, the best, best stylist in the world, cuts my hair and cuts it uneven. And, and I have to live like that for a while. But this doesn't have to do with haircut. This dividing has to do with making a straight line. You know, it's, it's, it's to, uh, to expound correctly the divine message. That's what it's talking about, to expound correctly. So men and men, you know, uh, teachers, people who are preaching and teaching the word of God, they need to expound correctly what the word of God says. That's what Paul's telling Timothy here. And then he goes on to say, rightly dividing the word of truth, the word of truth. That's God's word. It's not my words. It's his words. And, you know, here's some verses we all know. Psalm 119, 105, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, if we're, not, if we're only getting a tiny bit of God's word each week, then I fear many of us are stumbling around in the darkness. If we're just getting a tiny bit. I said, don't let this happen to you. Don't let it happen to me. Don't just get a tiny bit. Psalm 119, verse 116 says this. <clears throat> Uphold me according unto your word, that I, may, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. You know, let it not be said of us, you know, uh, when the Lord uh, calls us home that, that we're ashamed, you know. So what can we do about this? How can we correct our limited understanding of the Word of God? How can we do that? Well, number one, study. <laughs> you got to study. You know, you got personal Bible study. You've got group Bible study. You got Sunday school. And I'm, this, is, this is a bone I got to pick with everybody with Sunday school. You know what? Pastor teaches Sunday school. I teach Sunday school. We got people that don't come to Sunday school. I guess they know more than us. I guess they're doing better than us. I guess they don't need it. But that's wrong thinking, isn't it? That's not why they're not coming. God help us, man. They got to be here. They got to be here. How are they going to get fed? How are they going to get the light? Are they going to keep stumbling around because they're getting this much? And you know what? I got to tell you, I sit in the back there and I see what happens when pastor's preaching. Not everybody's all on the edge of their seat. Like when, when uh, Ezra was teaching, those guys were standing up there. They stood up for six hours hearing the word of God. And afterwards, they fell down on their faces. And they said, man, you know, they were crying. They were mourning because they heard the word of God. <laughs> you know, we got distractions, people getting up, going to the bathroom, keep people doing this, doing that. And God love you if you got an emergency. But, but for God's sakes, when we walk in those doors, Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Let's prepare our hearts to honor God. Let's make this, you know what? You're going to see something in a little bit that I'm going to show you that's going to, I, I hope, uh, uh, leave an imprint on what I'm talking about tonight. Because like I said, we're living in this cush, marshmallow fluff world. And God help us. Because you know what? To whom much is given, much is required. And we've, we've been given a lot. And, you know, God's going to... It's going to be payback or pay up time one of these days, you know? So what can we do about it? Personal Bible study, group Bible study, Sunday school, daily devotions. There's good preachers on the radio that you can follow during the week, you know, during your times of uh, uh, just doing, doing not too much. Ask for help. Ask for help. God, please help me to know you better. Practice this tough discipline. Studying the word of God is tough discipline. Practice it. No, it's not going to be easy. These are things that you can do. It's not going to be easy. The devil wants us to be as far away from God as possible. Pray. You need to pray. And don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. You know, Psalm 37, 23 to 24 says this. The steps of a good man, man are ordered uh, by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he may fall... He shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Don't get discouraged. This is not an easy thing. It's a tough discipline. 
Look what Paul said to Timothy, all these things, what all those words mean. Study to show yourself, what do, the, what do all those words mean? Timothy understood it, it's, it's, and it's gonna be a tough discipline. So you need to study, personal study, you need a group study, you need Sunday school, you need daily devotions, you need to ask for help, ask God for help. Ask us for help. Say, you know what I was reading in the scriptures, you know, because I, I really, you know, whenever we read the scriptures, and we, I don't know Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek. I don't know Hebrew. Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Some of those words, I could read them. They're in English, but I don't know exactly what they mean. Just like today, these words, study to show yourself approved. I looked them all up. You know where I looked them up? I looked them up in the Strong's Concordance. New Testament's all in Greek. Old Testament's all in Hebrew. Oh, by the way, this is a giveaway tonight. You know why? Because I got two of them. Somebody gave me another one. This is a little bit older, more worn out, but uh, uh, I'm giving this away tonight. Somebody wants it, you know, to help you with your study. This is one of the giveaways. <clears throat> I got more over here, so I'll, I'll show you some more here in a minute. So study, personal, group, Sunday school, you know, and don't just go, ha ha, this, get in there. And, you know, and if you know more than the person's teaching, then why don't you get up there and do some teaching? If you think, I don't go because I know so much, well, then you get your little you-know-what up there and you start teaching and helping out. Daily devotions, ask for help, ask God to, to, to you know, God, help me to know you better. I, I, I don't want to be ashamed when I go to heaven and, and see you face-to-face -face and say, I miss, I didn't know, I, I, I didn't know. Let's, let's, let's get to know them better and practice the tough discipline. It's going to be tough. I'm telling you, it's going to be tough. Now, I don't want to toot my horn or anything, but I'm just going to tell you how it was. And, and I don't mean that, you know, please don't take it like this. I just need to tell you that it, that it can be done. I used to work in the ICU, 12-hour shifts, busy ICU at the base. And, you know, I was single at the time. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of different factors, but I was single at the time. And I was helping out with uh, the hospital ministry. They had a church service there at the hospital. We'd go get patients and bring them down. And there was Sunday school, and then there was church. So, uh, and, you know, and it wasn't me. God did all this through me. You know, I just made myself available. And, and, and I, I want to tell you what God did. And if he did it for me, I'm just an ordinary guy. Matter of fact... <laughs> If he knew me before I was the Lord, you know, knew the Lord, I mean, you'd say, this, this, could, you know, this could have never happened to this guy, you know. But it did, and that's what the Lord did. But here's what happened. I would get off work at 6 o'clock in the morning, sometimes almost 7, and I wouldn't go home and sleep. I would go get, the, you know, the service ready. I'd do the Sunday school at 9 o'clock. I'd do the service with the people. I'd get home like 12 or 1 o'clock. I'd go to sleep and then wake up uh, at uh, five o'clock and be back at work at six o'clock. And you know what? Amazingly, I made it through all that time. Amazingly. You know, I wasn't like dead tired, dead to the world. I, I don't know how that happened. I mean, that was the Lord. And I did that for a long time. I, you know, and, I, and so I'm, I'm just saying stuff can be done if you let the Lord do it in you. I'm just an ordinary guy, I, you know, and, and he did all that stuff. So uh, make yourself available. Practice the tough discipline. I put down here, just start. Start now. Start digging into the Word of God. Start getting into it. You really don't know how much time we have left. You know, you really don't. And, you know, we spend a lot of time doing a lot of things. And some things you have to do, but there's a lot of time that... Uh, we're doing nothing that's, that's, that's going to profit anything when we, when we go to eternity. So spend some time in that. So to help you guys, I got some giveaways. Now, um, <laughs> David Jeremiah sends me a bunch of stuff. I never have time to read this. <laughs> this week I had to prepare five Bible studies, five. So I don't have time for all this other stuff. So I get this stuff, and... and uh, uh, Maybe you can use it. You know, maybe, maybe you're not as busy with certain things like I am, but you could use it. So there's one in here called uh, 
uh, you can trust the Bible, and uh, that's, that's a MacArthur thing. That's a giveaway. I've got all these turning points that I never get to read because I, I, I really don't have much time, you know, because I'm, I'm going through all this stuff and trying to get ready for a Bible study and, and things like that. And, you know, some things, you know, that you have to take care of anyway. Then I've got, uh, this, is, this is another giveaway. Sorry, you guys, it didn't show up tonight. You don't get the giveaways. <laughs> this is called Jet, Jet Tour Through Revelation. This is by MacArthur, you know, and uh, it's, it, it'll give you a little bit of a, an overview of the book of Revelation. And there's a, there's a few of those, so giveaway number four. Then uh, this was one of the first, Bi- first Bible handbooks that I used to, to study with when I was first getting started. It's not as in-depth as some of the others, but, I mean, it was good for me. It's, it's kind of old and beat up. If you could use it, you can have it. It'll give you a little insight on some of the, uh, on some of the uh, 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 books of the Bible and some of the histories and things like that. And, and I found it to be very helpful. So, and, and again, if you take these things and you don't use them, give them to somebody else. This here is just another devotional. You can write little notes in here. Again, some people are really good at that. I'm not, so it's a giveaway. I got some more here. I used to teach this at Edgemont. Of course, I did it a lot differently than what, what's in the book. I kind of, there's 13 chapters, supposed to take 13 weeks, and I took like two and a half years doing it because I did a little bit more. But in any case, you can do this, Fundamentals of the Faith. There's 13 chapters in here, and some of the chapters that be very helpful to you are Introduction to the Bible, How to Know the Bible, God, His Character, His Attributes, the Person of Jesus Christ, the Work of Jesus Christ, Salvation, person and ministry of the Holy Spirit, prayer in the believer, the church fellowship and worship, spiritual gifts, evangelism in the believer, obedience, and, and uh, God's will and guidance. Everybody wants to know, hey, what's, what's, what's God's will for me in my life? Well, this might help you. And, you, you know, you fill in the blanks. You look up the, again, guess what? This is going to be an endeavor. This stuff is going to take work and diligence. It ain't going to come by osmosis. You can't lay on it at night and get it all in your bed. That's another giveaway. Let's see what else I got here. <laughs> These pencils are giveaway. I'm not going to take any home. There's, there's like, there was 50 in there, so you guys can have the pencils. And you guys that stayed home, you don't get a pencil. Next, I just want to show you how I study. I'm teaching Romans down at uh, Blues Creek Chapel. All these references that I'm putting out here, every single one of them, is all in the book of Romans. Guess where you can find these for nothing? In our library. You can go in there, and you know, this is my favorite one right here. This is called the Pulpit Commentary. I got one of these at, at home. I use it quite a bit. I got to tell you, this is where maybe the, uh, the needle might hit you. I, I utilize that library a lot. I've been going to this church over 30 years. Sometimes I go in there and get a book. I look in there to see who signed it out last. And guess whose name I see? Me. My name. You know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Nobody else touched it. And that's happened several times. And I don't mean to sting you, but I'm just saying, we got room for improvement. And that library has got a tremendous resource. And if you want to labor, if you want to uh, be diligent, if you want to start finding yourself in some of this stuff, it's there. You know, this is, this is a Matthew Henry. He's a good commentator. You know, I, I like, uh, there's, there's certain guys I like that, uh, uh, that I pick out, but sometimes I, I, I don't always use them all. But I just want to give you an example. This is just the Book of Romans right here. Book, book of Romans, look at that. That's a lot of digestion, isn't it? And, and I'm not saying that I always go through all that, but I'm just saying it is there. So we don't really have an excuse. We don't have any excuse why we're not being diligent. I, I just uh, I want to encourage you. 
I want to stir you up. I want to give you my guts tonight because that's what it's all about. Because, you know, what are we going to say to our Lord? What are we going to do? Well, that's all I got for tonight. And I'm, I'm quitting before Al. <laughs> but I was talking fast, but I got to tell you, I was pumped up. <laughs> And I hope this is helpful. I hope this will stimulate you. I hope it'll stir you up. You know, don't be the ice crystals and the ice cream. Be the nice creamy stuff. Get stirred up. Get at it, you know. And uh, the, the, the opportunities are all over the place. You just got to get at it. And I'm just an ordinary guy. I, and, and, and God took this thing and did something with it. You know, and uh, I, I know when I go home for my high school reunion, you know, I haven't been to any of them. When I go home for my 30th or 50th, whatever, is it going to be the 50th? 50th. When I go home for my 50th, they're going to say, we thought you were dead. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to say, you know, well, I was dead. I was dead. But, but Christ made me alive. And uh, they're not going to believe, you know, they're going to say, Phew. You got religion? Well, I'm going to tell them all that stuff. So anyway, well, God bless you. Uh, I got another song we're going to sing in closing. It's 82. Number 82. And you all know this song. So we'll sing it together. Ready? 82. We'll sing all four verses. You ready? <clears throat> oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. We'll praise his name forever. We'll praise his name forever. We'll praise his name forever. Christ the Lord. We'll give him all the glory. We'll give him all the glory. We'll give him all the glory. Glory, Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, Christ my Lord. Well, Thank you for hanging in there with me tonight. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to give you my guts. And, and uh, um, what else do I want to say? Huh? The video. Thank you. And also, for you guys watching, I'm not doing Nehemiah tonight because usually I do that after this. So I'm going to try to send this to everybody that would have saw Nehemiah because I just, I really didn't have enough time to adequately prepare the next chapter of Nehemiah. So I had this, and so you're going to get this tonight, you people on Facebook that watch me, uh, instead of Nehemiah, and I'll be back with Nehemiah next week. But I have a video to show you, and I hope it kind of, you might have seen it, you know, but I hope it kind of hits you really good, because uh, we're living in uh, the fairy tale, fairy tale land here of the USA of you know, marshmallow fluff, but you look what, how are the people have to, have to deal with stuff. Go ahead. Let me finish with this uh, story. Uh, we go to China from time to time, and, and uh, uh, we train leaders. And this time, we brought up 22 leaders from the Hunan province, and they rode 13 hours on a train to get to a hotel that they came up two by two in these elevators as, so as to not draw any attention. And then they got to a hotel room, a little apartment uh, room, it's only about 700 square feet in the little living room, no air conditioning, hardwood floor, 22 sat there. 
I came in, and when you teach in China, you start at 8 in the morning, and you don't get done till 5 at night. You teach the whole day. They were sitting there, all 22 of them, and I looked around, and I said, now, if we get caught, what will happen to me? They said, oh, you'll get deported in 24 hours, and we'll go to prison for three years. I said, you're kidding. How many of you have been in prison for your faith? Out of 22, 18 raised their hands. I thought, no way. And I looked at him and I said, you, you 22 people, how many people do you oversee? Because they were all of these small group leaders, underground church leaders in the Hunan province. I said, how many, if you counted up all the people under your jurisdiction, how many would it be? And they counted them up and they said, a little over 20 million. I said, what? See, we forget there's 1.3 billion people in China. This is crazy. Well, I had 15 Bibles, and I passed them out. Obviously, seven didn't get them. And I said, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to read it. And just then, one lady handed hers to somebody next to her. And I thought, hmm, interesting. Well, we turned there anyway, and as we started reading it, I understood why she gave it away. She had memorized the whole thing. She just recited the whole chapter. When it was done, I went over to her at a break, and I said, you, you, you recited the whole chapter. She says, oh, yes, I've memorized many chapters. I said, where did you memorize so many chapters? She said, in prison. <laughs> she said, you have much time in prison. <laughs> so I said, but don't they confiscate the Bible? She said, yes. So people bring in scriptures written on pieces of paper, and they bring it in. So I said, but then if they find that piece of paper on you, won't they confiscate that? She said, oh, yes, that's why you memorize it as fast as you can. Because <laughs> even though they can take the paper away, they can't take what's hidden in your heart. I thought, wow. Well, after three days, you fall in love with these people. And when it was done, I said, how can I pray for you? I'm going to go back to America. You guys have been just so wonderful. How can I pray for you? They said, you know, Wayne, you guys can gather like this whenever you want to in America. We can't. Could you pray that one day we'll be just like you? And I looked at him and I said, I will not do that. Big, incredulous eyes looked at me and they said, why? <laughs> I said, because you guys rode a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than an hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat not only here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people don't often come back. In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles, and you memorize them from pieces of paper. I will not pray that we become like, uh, you become like us, but I will pray that we become just like you. So we got a lot of room for improvement, don't we? May God help us Just get stirred up. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for allowing us to be here and what a privilege it is and to hear just how others throughout the world, they just don't even have the opportunity we have, but they are far, far ahead of us in their walk with you and their understanding of you. And the scripture does say, to whom much is given, much is required. And that means us, Lord. That means us. We can't look at somebody else and say that's going to be for him. That's for us. And Lord, I know it's tough. Studying to show yourself approved, it's not easy. We got all kinds of things that are going to try to drive us away. But you've given us so many resources and you've given us so much to, 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 to have an opportunity to look into. God, I ask that you'd help us that you'd stir us up, that we wouldn't be bleacher people,
but we would be in the game and doing our very best for you. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thanks for listening.